I am no musician, but like most people, I love music. And I'm going to try to pick out a couple of my favorite songs from 1969, both of which hit number one on the charts. It is my belief that composing music with a stirring and unforgettable melody is the highest and most difficult of all the art forms. To find a sequence of single notes that indelibly imprints itself in the mind, how the heck can people do that? And yet John Fogarty of Credence and Henry Mancini did it over and over again. So why not me? Well, for starters, unlike those guys, I'm not a musical genius. In fact, I don't even read music. So here is the story of how a person who makes movies about visual artists became an ersatz composer. Full disclosure, my wondrous Nancy knows a lot about music, particularly jazz, and has helped me enormously. Part of my interest in this was an ulterior motive. I love putting music in my movies, but YouTube instantaneously catches copyright violations and then punishes you. My solution has been to use only music that I have permission to use, mostly from the great Dutch composer and guitarist, Stan Leonard. My gratitude to Stan is unending. Here's one of Stan's songs. It's called, Let's Go. You can see why I love his music. Nevertheless, I always had this dream of being able to generate my own copyright free music. And when COVID struck, I took this up as my obsessive pandemic hobby. My goal was not to write the next fortunate son or Moon River, but hopefully to make something that would sound okay in my videos. Whether I've been successful is not for me to say, but here are a couple snippets. I became friends with Chris Schmidt back in 2009 when I started making movies for the Schmidt Dean Gallery. I was immediately taken by his intellect, sense of humor, and passion for art, artists, and art history. 
Hi, John. Welcome to my show. Jennifer Baker's new show at Rosemont College contains two bodies of work, paintings about Northern liberties and paintings which serve as a eulogy to her parents. What's the link between these different types of paintings? Years earlier, I had found a free online tutorial on how to use Final Cut Pro to edit video. This was made by the wonderful Israel Izzy Hyman. Izzy also composed some very nice music for filmmakers, which I bought and have used quite a bit. One day, I saw that Izzy was offering a $39 tutorial on how to use GarageBand. I signed up immediately. Much of it was how to use Apple Loops to cobble something together. This is fun, but not what I wanted. But Izzy also showed you the mechanics of composing your own songs using GarageBand. Now this seemed promising. The next step was to try to learn something about how music works. I had heard about things like how a song is written in a certain key, or how songs often rely on a chord progression, whatever the heck that meant. We live in an age of access to learning almost anything you want to Google. I found a YouTube video made by the brilliant Andrew Wang called Learn Music Theory in Half an Hour. It is incredibly helpful, although I have spent much more than a half hour trying to absorb all its lessons. Thanks to Andrew, you can give me any note on the piano and I can work out both the major and the minor scales that go with it. Also, the three note chords called triads that go with these notes. I learned that playing a set of these triads in a particular order is called a chord progression. Using chord progressions provides a great scaffolding for a song. There are all sorts of sites that give you suggestions for chord progressions. But I want to give a shout out to my friends of the Package Goods Orchestra who told me to try 1564. So here is one way I try to work with GarageBand. I use a MIDI keyboard to input the triad chords for a particular scale. I name each one by its number and the three notes in it. Here's the Do, Re, Mi for E flat, followed by its chords. I then make a new track and copy a chord progression into it. So here we have the E flat 1564 chord progression. Here's what that sounds like. I then make another track, copy in the same chords and get GarageBand to arpeggiate them, which means it plays the notes individually. Both tracks together. Next, I add some melody notes, avoiding notes that might clash 
with the chords or arpeggiated notes. Here I slowed it down and added an upright bass. It's easy to generate mediocre music, which mine mostly is. I constantly fight against the mindless decoration that GarageBand so readily facilitates. But although it's impossible, trying to emulate the elegant simplicity of Fogarty and Mancini compositions is a worthy goal and really fun. I'm an evangelist for creativity. It enhances your life. And you don't have to be John Fogarty or Henry Mancini to benefit from the attempt.